of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder, do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. You can't, you can't get him off of your head. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah. Come on, someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, say it again. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now say it in Spanish. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Say it in English. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a great hand clap. Father, we bless you. We honor you today. This is the day the Lord has made. Tell your neighbor, it's the Lord's day. Come on, look at someone else and say, he made it today. That's right. And because the Lord made it, whoo, we're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad. Amen. So everybody, just smile, smile, smile. Let me see your 32. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Smile, smile, smile. This is the day the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. It's the day of the Lord. And it's July. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. We were driving yesterday with the family. And I said, it's July. And it's almost August school time. Mark is like, oh, Dad. And I said, come on. But it's July, amen. And this month, we're going to declare it be a Jubilee July. Someone say Jubilee. Jubilee. Now, you can't say that word without smiling. So tell your neighbor, it's Jubilee. That's right. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Because he has anointed me. Come on. He has anointed you. Well, what has he anointed me to do, Pastor? Well, he's anointed me to preach. Come on. He's anointed you to preach. Hallelujah. He's anointed you to heal the brokenhearted. Come on. To restore the sight to those that are blind. Come on. To recover those that are oppressed. 
to loose those that are captive, to bring and declare this is the acceptable year of the Lord. It's the month of July, Jubilee, in the name of Jesus. What does Jubilee mean also? It means it's harvest. Come on. So can we believe God for some harvest this month? Huh? Huh? I believe it. I believe that promotions, increases in the name of Jesus where you work. Maybe you're retired or maybe you're just receiving a social security. Maybe you have oil. Whatever it is, there's going to be an increase in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. You might say, well, Pastor, I, 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 I don't have any oil. I don't have any la I'm talking about a Holy Ghost oil. Come on. There's an increase of the Holy Ghost in this place. Now, we got to do something. The Bible says if I draw near, then God's going to draw near. Amen? So how do I draw near? I lift my hands. Let me see. There you go. Amen. I clap my hands. Let me see. Come on. Amen. I sing. Let me hear you sing. <laughs> they say hallelujah. That's good. That's good. I give my heart to Jesus. I say yes to Him. I accept Him as my personal Lord and my personal Savior. He's just not my mom's God or my dad's God. He's my God. He's just not a religion that I wake up to go to. He is my relationship who I long to be with. Come on. So let's draw closer to Him. Father, we commit this Sunday to you. It being the first Sunday of the month, as we commune at your table, as we give you honor, give you glory, and declare July Jubilee in Jesus' name. Now, someone say it's harvest time. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. It's harvest time. Woo. Yes. This is a dream. A dream for the world to see you. A dream for the world to know you. To love your name. I lift up a shout. Lift up a shout. A shout and the walls are coming down. Yeah, we're running after you. Like a rolling stone, like a runaway train, no turning. No more yesterday, my heart is free. No chains on me. God, you wake me up, up from the grave with the cross before I'm on my way. My heart is free. No chains on me. Chains on me. 
God, you raised me up, up from the grave with a cross before. I'm on my way, Lord, my heart is free. No chains on me. I got no chains on me. Oh, Lord, Oh, you know the walls are coming down, church. Come on, let's sing it. The walls are coming down. The walls are coming down. The walls are coming down. Yeah, the walls are coming down. Yeah, the walls are coming down. Yeah, the walls are coming down. Like a rolling stone, like a runaway train, no turning back. No more yesterday. Sing it again. The walls are coming down. The walls are coming down. Come on, sing it. The walls are coming down. You see them? Come on. The walls are coming down. Yeah, Lord. The walls are coming down. Yeah, the walls are coming down. Yeah, the walls are coming down. Like a rolling stone, like a runaway train. No turning back. No more yesterday. My heart is free. Chains on me. God, you raised me up, up from the grave with the cross before. I'm on my way. My heart is free. No chains on me. I got no chains on me. Hallelujah, Lord. If my heart is free. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise offering this morning. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless you, Father. Oh, we will shout your name above the rooftops, Lord. Yes, we will praise you, Father. Yeah. Here I am before you, falling in love seeking your truth knowing that your perfect grace has brought me to this place because of you I freely live my life to you oh God I give so I stand before you God I lift my voice cause you set me free so I shout out your name from the rooftops I proclaim that I am yours, I am yours. So I shout out your name from the rooftops I proclaim that I am yours, I am yours. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. We thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus, we love you. Oh, all the good you've done, Lord, and all the good you've done for me. I lift up my hands for all to see. You're the only one who brings me to my knees. To share this love across the earth, the beauty of your heart. So I kneel before you, God. I lift my hands because you set me free. Come on, sing it. So I shout out your name from the rooftops I proclaim. Stand with arms 
That's the new song, Lewis, right there. Woo, the rooftop. Come on, somebody. Amen and amen. We shout it from the rooftop that I am the Lord's. Amen. Come on. Our life is the rooftop right there. Everywhere we go, we are just declaring that we are the Lord's. The Bible says that he is the hope of glory, that I am hid in Christ, the hope of glory. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time of praise and worship unto your name hallelujah as a church we celebrate today beginning the month of July and many of us uh, have individuals that are in military and know of people that are in the military people that have surrendered their lives in the military we have lost families, uh, uh, soldiers in the military. And so this, this entire weekend and really this entire month, our entire nation celebrates the Day of Independence. And as, as we celebrate its independence, we know that there was a price that was paid. Amen? Amen. There was a price that was paid for our independence. And... Uh, um, and that was our natural independence. And because we're in the church and we're in the house of God, uh, we also have a spiritual independence where we were free from the spirit of, of, of death and, and sickness and disease and sin as a slave. And now we are uh, joint heirs with Christ and he is our master. And we are free from that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, uh, and so we, we, we celebrate both physically and spiritually today. Can you remember the day that Jesus set you free? Can you remember the day that you were in your history class and you were taught the day of independence and the history there was? Maybe your grandfather or maybe a grandmother or maybe someone spoke to you about the sacrifices that were made for our country and our nation. So together as a family, if you can, I'm going to ask everyone to remain standing. Uh, Lewis has a special song to sing uh, for today uh, in honor of our 4th of July weekend and also for our spiritual independence in the Lord Jesus Christ. Twilight. 
lies last gleaming and whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fire or the ramparts we walk were so gathered Let's join together as uh, Jade and Linares um, begins the Pledge of Allegiance. Direct your attention to our flags on our screens. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and, and justice for all. All right, Jade, now in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. No, that's good. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a great hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house. What a special weekend this is. And I know many families are, are uh, you know, with each other. It's a special, special weekend. But even in the midst of our Christian family and our Christian community, we celebrate the independence of, you know, the sacrifice and the love that the Lord Jesus Christ gave for us. Amen. So what a blessing. At this time, I, I wanted to, and, and, and Lily, you can help me with some of those that are with you. Uh, I want to pass out our prayer cards. If you have not received a prayer card, I want you to receive a prayer card today. Every beginning of the month, we, 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 we welcome you, we encourage you to write a focus on one of these prayer cards. You see many of them here at our prayer cross, many people throughout the entire day come to church, they pray and uh, they write prayer cards and they put them on the cross or they'll come to one of our services and, and they'll ask the Lord. The Bible says that when we are in agreement, if you need a prayer card, just lift your hand so that our our teenagers can help help you uh, with that prayer card. The Bible says when there's two of you in agreement, then we can ask. We can ask. And, you know, sometimes we don't have, Sandra, because we don't ask. Or, the Bible says, we ask amiss. We ask amiss. What does that mean, Pastor? Sometimes when we go to prayer, we just go talking to God and we tell Him what we want when God knows exactly what we need. And when we share our hearts with the Lord, whatever it may be, maybe you need a job. God knows what you need because you have bills and you need money to pay your... Come on. The Bible said if a man won't work, then he shouldn't eat. So God knows what you need. Maybe you need restoration with someone. 
Maybe you need forgiveness in an area or you need to be released to forgive someone. You can put that down. And you can be assured that this ain't going to be broadcast. I'm not going to be saying, you know, fulano de tal said he needs prayer because his marriage is in a, you know, that's between you and the Father, amen? amen. But what we do as an act of faith is we put it down because many times the Bible even makes it very clear that we need to see what we are needing from the Lord. Doubting Thomas had to see the piercings for him to believe. Habakkuk 2.2 2 says, write it down. Write it down. Why? So that you can see it. That's why. And we put it down on paper so that we can not only see it, but that so we can make a point of contact and a prayer of agreement with you and that area that you're believing God for. I've had so many testimonies. If you have written on one of these prayer cards, and let me just, to, to give honor to the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit led us to do this. If you have written something on a prayer card, you're here in the service, or the praise team, and God supernaturally answered. I have an aunt here who put three specific things that was in need of and in less than seven days, now this isn't bait, this isn't a commercial, come on. This isn't paid advertisement, come on. This is the truth of believing in God that carries a testimony. And she put three things down. And within six days, God supernaturally answered everything she asked for. Now, she called me not in unbelief or disbelief. She wasn't like, I can't believe it. God really heard me. She called me to give God honor. So I say that to encourage you. Don't take it lightly. When a church presents to you a challenge to do something, maybe you say, well, pastor, the church I used to come from, we never did that. Well, I got news for you. You're not in that church. You're in this church. Amen. Well, pastor, at the other church, we just prayed and we grabbed hands with a brother and a sister. And that's, well, that's great. We do that too. But the Holy Spirit has led us to write it down. And if we honor what the Holy Spirit has asked us to do, then I know the Father is being honored. And I know when he's being honored, <laughs> his hand begins to move. Come on. Amen. Amen. And that door that needed to be opened that no man can open, he opens it up. Come on. So how many of you have had, like my aunt, an experience like that, an encounter with that where God supernaturally, you wrote it down by faith, and God supernaturally answered. Let me see a show of hands. Let me see. Everywhere. Praise it everywhere. Everywhere. Amen. What have you done that have risen your hand? Well, you, you are telling the person next to you, we serve a God of the impossibilities. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. Well, I want to, to pass these to your nearest aisle right there. Just pass them down. JJ, help us. Someone else, jump in and help us. Bring those to us. We're, gonna, we're going to collect those here in just a few moments. But I am going to ask the ushers to please come forward so we can have our time in communion. We can do two things at, at a time. Amen. We can pass out communion and pass out our cards and believe. So ushers that are going to help us today, we are going to be passing them out to the people and to our children. Everyone is welcome to receive at the Lord's table. He said, do this in remembrance of me. And that is why we do it. What are we remembering, Pastor? Well, we're remembering the life of Christ in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please go deliver the food. Thank you, Jesus. What else are we doing, Pastor? 
Well, we are believing and declaring. Go ahead, Danny, brother, sister. Thank you all. We're believing that when we receive, it is brought back to our remembrance the life and the sacrifice of the Lord. When you grab that cup, that juice that represents the blood, I want you to remember, maybe you've never been taught this, or maybe you've never heard this before. Maybe communion has never been as holy as it is as we are taking it right now. That's why it's very important that we do this in reverence, in remembrance of Him. Uh, seven times the Lord bled, and He bled for us. The first time He bled was in their Jewish culture, and we serve it today also, is when he was circumcised. And Jesus bled. Jesus also bled when he was taken to that whipping post. And his back opened up 39 times. And he bled for you and for me. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And then he was walking, carrying that cross to Golgotha, the place of skull, a hundred and, excuse me, a thousand, one hundred times, steps, eleven hundred steps. They put that crown of thorns on his head and Jesus bled. They pierced his hands and they pierced his feet. Christ bled. And then when he gave up the ghost and said, Father, it is finished. Into your hands I commit my spirit. He breathed his last. And the Roman soldier pierced his rib between the seventh and eighth rib. And the Bible says that blood flowed out. Jesus bled. His blood washes our sin. Hallelujah. Now, let me say this, because we need to learn this. When we take the Lord's communion, this is not taking the Lord's communion and saying, okay, all my sin from whew, last month is gone. No. When Christ died for you at the cross, Sin was covered. That's the power, church. See, we don't do this every month to cover our sin. Our sin has been covered. Someone say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, we do this in remembrance of what Christ did for us. We hold this cracker that represents the touch of his body. And it was bruised, it was broken, it was torn, it was split, it was hurt, abused. His body took that suffering, took that pain, so that our body, which is the body of Christ, wouldn't be broken, torn apart. So we don't just take this lightly, church. We take this in reverence of the Almighty God who gave His best. For God so loved the world, He gave His Son. And whosoever believeth on Him would not perish but have everlasting life. He said, let your hearts not be troubled. He said, believe in me. You've believed in my Father. I'm leaving, but I'm coming back. And where I go, I am going to prepare a place for you. So when we take of the Lord's Supper, Matthew 26, 26, Jesus said, this is my new covenant. And this is my body. So with your right hand, please take the cup that's holding the juice, a representation of the Lord's blood. 
and please receive by faith. In the name of Jesus, please take the cracker in representation of the body of Christ and please break and receive. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the blood and the broken body that has washed our sins away and that has completely healed and restored the church, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can everyone say amen? amen. Pass your cups, please, to your nearest aisle. The ushers will help at this time, and we can go ahead and take our table there. What a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah and hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Nothing like the blood and nothing like the precious body of our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Everyone has, has brought their prayer cards. If you haven't, you need to so we can commit and pray right now for them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, go ahead, Lewis. Father, we thank you for the power of the blood and the power of your body. We thank you for the answers in these petitions and we declare them answered. We declare them met. We speak to them and declare that you said, cast our cares upon the Lord because he cares for us. So our petitions, our concerns, our burdens, our worries, our anxieties, our stress, whatever that is dealing in our life today, we give it to you and declare it done in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the blessing of the Lord. To God be the glory. And amen. Hallelujah. Give our praise team a great hand clap. Amen. Thank y'all so much. And we can be seated at this time. The children are coming so I can pray over them and bless them as well. Hallelujah and hallelujah. We're going to pray over our wonderful students. I know it's the 4th of July weekend. Many of you were there at the park seeing all the fireworks and, and all that great stuff. And I know many are, are, are with family right now. But, you know, the good news is we're together and uh, we're going to keep praying for everybody. Amen. The Lord continue to fill his house with his family. Let's pray. Lift our hands. Father, we bless them and we thank you for our wonderful blessings that you have delivered into our care. Lord, we give them to you and declare them blessed in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now, they're going to be blessed by the teaching there with their class and, and everything. So we love you and love you, love you, love you. Hallelujah and hallelujah. What a blessing. Well, it's my honor to continue this series on Malachi. Hallelujah. It's my honor to continue this teaching on Malachi. And I've, I've, I've asked Tommy to put it on the screen, the title, God's Way of Marriage to Becoming One. Uh, one plus one equals one. Now, I said this in our first service, and to, to any uh, math teachers in the house or future math teachers or mathematicians, you know, um, this, this equation just, just doesn't make sense. Huh? How many of you remember the day when you were this tall and you were in school and you were taught? I mean, you know the day, you know the teacher, you know the class period, you even know what you took for lunch that day. How many of you know that day when you learned to one plus one equals what? Two. Two. Do y'all know, would y'all, can you tell me that exact day? Does anybody know that exact day? 
Is there any smart people in this church? <laughs> no, we are all smart. We're in church. That's why we're smart. Praise the Lord. You know, we may not know the exact. You, you could probably guesstimate. You could probably say, yeah, I was probably in second grade and some of us in fourth grade. <laughs> Well, you know, six, you know, whatever, you know. When you learn two, one plus one equals two. And so we've lived our life, you know, with this whole um, concept. And it's right. Yes, mathematically, if you have one apple and another apple, or one apple and one apple, you combine them together and you have a great apple pie, right? <laughs> or an apple cobbler or something. Oh, I got your attention now, right? Praise the Lord. Let me see. Um, yeah, Mark, stand right there. Isaiah, stand right there. All right. And then let me have uh, uh, Caleb... And uh, let me see, uh, Lily, just stand over here. Both of y'all right here. All right? Both of y'all right Like y'all together right here. All right? Facing everybody. There you go. All right? So if I have one person and I have another person and I add them together, it makes two people, correct? One plus one equals two. Can anybody argue that? No. It is what it is. When you have one individual and another individual and you add them together, well, that makes double trouble. I mean, double, <laughs> double, that makes two people, right? Y'all can have a seat. Thank y'all so much. Give them a hand clap. Now, why would you do that? Because that is how we have been taught about marriage. In the book of Malachi, chapter 2, starting with verse number... 15, but did he not make them one? Having a remnant of the spirit, why one? He seeks godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously broken faith with the wife of his youth. Father, thank you for your word. It's uncompromising. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, it helps us live in righteousness. It takes the things that need to be out from us, takes them away. And it adds to us what you have for us. In Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. God has a divine plan for marriage. Now, I know I'm speaking to groups of people in this house. And I'm speaking to a large group of people around the world. I know that there are people watching or even here that you are married and some are happily married. There are people here that um, uh, are together, um, living with each other, and you're not in covenant with God. There are people here that have been divorced, remarried or just divorced. There are people here whose spouses have passed and have remained single uh, or have remarried. 
There are people here uh, who are single, who uh, uh, will be married uh, or seeking that at the right timing. There are people here that will remain single until the Lord's coming. Someone says, I rebuke that preacher in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Church, it's okay, all right? It's all right. It's all right. Um, when the Lord brought this message of Malachi to the church living faith, I strongly know that he wanted us to get back to the heart of our Father. Not that we had lost the heart, not that we refocused on something else, but a sharpening within us. Um, a reunitement with, with us. Many times, like we're going to pray at the end of service for Fernando and Griselda, who have celebrated uh, 22 years of marriage. Amen. And they're a blessing. Uh, in February, my aunt Elvira and Angel and my parents celebrated 42 years of marriage. Amen. 45 years. I'm sorry, Mama. 45 years. She said, get it right. I've been with this man 45 years. We just uh, asked uh, Brother Sisto and Sister Maria, and I uh, went to their house to eat some watermelon the other day. It was cold, good watermelon. I ate the seeds and everything. Oh, so good. <laughs> And I looked at those teenagers on the wall. I said, who are they? They go, that's us getting married. I said, praise the Lord. They've been married 42 years. To God be the glory. Amen. <laughs> Brother Chavez and Sister Orales, Sister Orales is going to sing a special here at the end of our service. Uh, they're celebrating 52 years. Come on, somebody, of marriage. What a blessing. So we have roots, church, come on, in our church about marriage. Now, to Marky and Isaiah and some of the ladies that are here that are single and Caleb and other individuals that are here and they're not married. I see Harley back there. You're not married, right, Harley? All right, great. <laughs> He's like, not yet. All right, you see. But this is for you too. This is for all of us too. All right, so we're going to learn today for the next few, few minutes about God's way, which is one plus one equals one. Now again, to a mathematical individual that aces all their math tests, this does not register in your mind. Because when you see an equation like that, one plus one does not, I mean, it's actually irking you right now just to see that number one right now. You are saying within yourself, it is two. It is two. One plus one is not one, it is two. Now, when you go back to school and you take your test and you get the equation one plus one, don't put one because you'll get it wrong. But as believers in Christ who have put God first in our life, one man one woman equals God's covenant between two people and his family. We just read here in the book of Malachi that why would God want man and woman to be one? Why would he want us to be intimate with each other in our covenant why would he want us? The Bible says, because God seeks godly, what? Offspring. What is an offspring? He wants children that are raised in Christ. He wants children that know the purpose of life, which is in Christ. That's why God himself instituted the holy matrimony so that we can become one and procreate godly seed. Can I have an amen? amen. Now, 
pastor didn't write this. This is the writing of the Lord. And as we've been doing this study in Malachi, we have really, really learned a lot of things about what God sees and what God says about our life. Not just a marriage, but about our life. You see, in Malachi chapter 1, God spoke to them very, very boldly and said, I love you. He shook them up a little bit. And all the tortilla chips fell out when he shook them up. And he said, I love you. And then they began to talk back and argue with God. Why do you love me? How do you love me? You're not showing me your love. Because, see, they were living a life materialistically when God was trying to awake them spiritually. See, when we put our focus on things that we can naturally see, then we've missed it. That's why he says, as high as the heavens are, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. God wants us to see far beyond what our natural eye can see, what our hand can touch and feel. He wants us to see how he sees, and he wants us to feel what he feels. Chapter 2 of Malachi, he speaks to the leaders, and he tells the leaders, shape up, because I'm fixing to ship you out. That's what he's saying. He said, if you don't obey me, if you don't honor me and show reverence to my name and keep bringing this filth to the altar, then I'm going to replace you. That's what he's saying. And those are some hard words, but they are words to men and women who are leaders in the body of Christ, and particularly the priests here in the book of Malachi that were not living according to the law of God. They weren't living according to it. They, were, they thought that, the, how has it said, they were an exception to the rule? That they didn't have to follow the, the, the speed limit out there because they had authority. They had a badge or whatever it was, so it says 30 miles an hour, but because I am who I am, I can drive 50 miles an hour. No, you can't because that same vehicle that I drive has probably the same power that you drive and that curve that I'm turning is the same curve that you're turning. And if the, the speed is the same, you're going to flip the same way I'm going to flip. Come on. So if we don't abide by the same rules, someone's going to get hurt. Right? And these people were turning over, flipping, because they weren't abiding by the law of God. And God brought it back to them and said, this is how I want you. This is how I want you, like Levi, who feared me, who, who, who loved me. This is how I see you. This is what I desire of you. But you keep on arguing. And then he's now in, 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 in the chapter, midway through chapter 2, and he's talking now to the covenant. He's talking about divorce because the children of Israel divorced their wives. And they went to another female that worshipped another god. What do you mean, pastor? They worshipped another god. They had images that they were worshiping. They had idols that they were worshiping. And these men divorced so that they could go and pleasure themselves with these foreign women, relationships, objects, gods. And God said, that's not what I intended. That's not what I want. How is the godly offspring going to be produced? How is the world going to inherit my blessing if you're out of covenant and you're divorced? He says, I hate divorce. I hate it. Wednesday, we brought an in-depth study, powerful teaching in the book of Matthew chapter 19 about what Jesus says about a marriage. 
Because, see, the Pharisees wanted to bring him back and, and tell, tell Jesus, well, Moses said it this way, that it's okay to divorce. It's okay. And Jesus says, you're right. Moses was fed up with the hardness of their heart because they didn't want to change. They didn't want to give a second chance. They didn't want to forgive. They didn't want to see restoration. And because when a person cuts themselves off of that, then you know what? Give them what they want. Give them the paper. Give them what they think they deserve and move on with your life. Yeah, Moses wrote that. But then Jesus says, but what did God write? He said, are, are you just going to follow man? Or are you going to follow God? You see, and that's the, 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 the biggest problem. And I say that light, uh, respectfully, not lightly, because my wife doesn't like the word problem. She likes to use the word opportunity. That's the greatest opportunity, problem, today in our world. The average American family is married eight years, and that's it. Some shorter than that, some a little bit longer. But really, about that eighth year, they're fed up. They're fed up with socks on the floor. They're fed up with, you know, their girlfriends coming over and, oh, yeah, my husband bought me this James Avery look. They do a little selfie, and, and here's the wife with no James Avery but a James Avery or something, you know. Instead of it being sterling silver, it's sterling plated silver or something, you know. Start looking at materialistic things, come on, rather than a spiritual inheritance. And so we have this whole frame, this whole mindset of marriage. Easy come, easy go. If I don't like it, hang it up. Huh? And the world has portrayed this as okay. 50% of believers, people that we sit with, commune with, chat with, read the Bible with, 50% of believers also end up in divorce. Now, we're talking about marriage, yes, because that's what the Bible is talking about right now in the book of Malachi. But I want to give a greater scope about our marriage towards the Lord. We are the bride of Christ. And he is coming for a church without spot and without wrinkle. That's not saying that I have to be so perfect. I have nothing that, that, is, that, that is imperfect in me. But that means that everything within me I want it to be pure for God. Everything within me, I want it to be pleasing to his sight. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 in our Bibles. And I'm watching my time. I know many of you have plans for the afternoon. But the good thing is we're together this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5. Now, let me just warn you right now. There's going to be some things you hear that are new, and there's going to be some things that you hear that are old. But it's all going to help us with our relationship to the Lord. One plus one equals one. He says here in verse number 31 of chapter 5 of Ephesians, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two, there it is, one plus one, the two shall become one flesh. Paul was referring to when Adam was asleep and then he awoke. And while he was awakened, he saw Eve and said, You shall be called woman. Hallelujah. 
Now, I say this, that marriage is a kind of lighten it up because it's always tense at a marriage sometimes. You know, you got the, the man here shaking, you know, you got the woman just crying and laughing, hallelujah. And I tell the marriage couple all the time, you know, when, uh, when, uh, when Adam saw his, his bride, praise the Lord, that's how he named Eve a woman because he stepped back and he said, whoa, 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 man. Okay, that was a place to laugh right there. But he said, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, because the woman came out of man. God created them both, blessed them both. God laid Adam to rest. He did surgery on Adam and from his rib cage took out the woman. And now Adam has now a helpmate uh, or the Bible considers meat, uh, has a helper has a person compatible or comparable to him, to help him, to help him do what? Subdue the earth, to do what? Have dominion on the earth, to do what? To procreate, to be fruitful, and to multiply. That's why God said in Malachi, am I not just one father? Do I not just want one specific seed? And that's why I don't want you to be dealing with each other treacherously. Don't handle your marriage lightly is what he's saying. Verse 22, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Wives, submit. And all the men are like, I'm so glad pastor's there. And I'm glad my wife came to church today. For some reason, she never comes to church. But today, I'm so glad she's here. And the wife's like, oh, no, he didn't. Snapping your finger. Oh, I already see your attitude, women. Next Sunday, I'm going to come with a shield right here. Don't want any potatoes or tomatoes thrown at me. Wives, submit to your own husbands. Now remember, in this teaching, we are learning that we are all the bride to Christ. So when I'm speaking to directly to a woman, to a wife here, I am speaking to us all because we are all the bride of Christ. I'm speaking to myself. Pastor? Submit, come on, to the bridegroom who is Jesus. Come on. I'm speaking to all of us. But let's have fun right now and talk to the wives, all right? <laughs> Submit to your own husbands. Own husbands. But pastor, I got to do all the things he tells me to do. I got to, I got to... Pastor, I, what he don't even come to church. What pastor? He don't even. You think he, he don't even got a job? Pastor, he don't even buy me nothing. Pastor, you're telling me to submit? Submit to what? Huh? To that? Well, you know what? I don't know how long ago you were married. But that long ago, come on, wasn't a fairy tale. Come on, somebody. You walked an aisle, and those googly eyes looked at each other, and both of you said, I do. <laughs> now you're like, why did I say I do? That word submit. And, I want, and you see, remember, one plus one to all of us, it's two, right? And you can't change that. You cannot tell me mathematically that one plus one is one. You can't tell me that. Because mathematically, one plus one is two. If I were to give a test by an algebra teacher or a geometry teacher or a physics teacher, whoever gives me that equation, one plus one equals, and I put one, they're going to put a big fat X on it and say, you're wrong. 
What do you mean I'm wrong? I went to church on Sunday for the July weekend, and my pastor said it was one. So if I'm wrong, then he's wrong. No, it's not about being wrong. It's about knowing what's right. Because mathematically, our mind is immediately saying, yes, one plus one is two. But spirit-minded, in a covenant, one plus one is not two. It's one. We become one flesh. You see, our mind is geared in a different direction. From a very young age, we were taught that if you have one individual and another individual, now you have two individuals. So you have two different personalities. You have two different strengths. You have two different weaknesses. You have two different emotions. You have two different bank accounts. You have two different, come on, uh, lifestyles. You have two different beds in a room. You have two different refrigerators. Come on. You have that side of the refrigerator, and I have that side of the refrigerator. Come on. You have my shows and I have my show. Come on, somebody. But from, a, from, a, from a young person, you have been taught, even in your, your, your growings up of seeing your own parents, because mathematically they thought when you have one person and you have another person, it's two individuals. But when you see it in the way God sees our life, it's not one plus one equals two. It is one plus one equals one. Amen. Your emotions are my emotions. Amen. Your weaknesses are my weaknesses. Your strengths are my strengths. What does that mean? That doesn't mean that my weaknesses are the same as hers. But whatever area she's weak in, come on, I can help in that area. Wives, submit. Come on, somebody. Submit. It doesn't mean bow down. Oh, my Lord. It doesn't mean, husbands, shake your glass when your tea is empty. And you start saying, wives, submit. The pastor read the scripture. You know what submissive means? Here, come follow me real quick, Miss Kim. Let me just show. I like your red, white, and blue. Hallelujah. Now, you stand facing. Right here, right here, right here. Submit, submit. All right. <laughs> Turn around. There you go. All right. I'm going to touch you. There you go. This is a marriage. Wait a minute, Pastor. When we got married, we were like this. You married us. And we looked at each other with googly, googly eyes 17, 18 years ago. How long? 16 years ago, thank you, Jesus. She's my helper, right? <laughs> and we committed to each other. But that was when you say, I do, because she had to hear it. And then after your marriage, this is how you now are supposed to live. Just like this. What do you mean, Pastor? Why? Does that mean she's always behind you? Well, then that means that I'm behind her. Uh, so what do you mean, Pastor? Let me, let me help you see something real quick. Our weaknesses are always behind us. Because our past is our weakness. Come on. If the enemy is ever going to try to attack you, he's not going to come to you face to face. He's a scaredy cat. He's a wimp. He don't want to come to you. He didn't come to Adam first. He came to the woman first. He's a wimp. He's a big wimp. And hairy and ugly too, I might add. Smelly too. Well, yeah. I say, yeah, that's who he is. And he's puny. So if, if, if my wife is in submission to me as the head of the church, come on, as the Bible says, as Christ is the head of the church, and the man is the head of the wife. Remember, everything's evolving around we, the body of Christ, the wife of the Lord. Then in my weaknesses, what I dealt with in my past, what's trying to creep up behind me, come on. Because we are one, my wife got my back. 
She sees everything. And you know what she does in my past? No, yo soy el hombre, aquí yo mando. You know what my wife does in my past? In my weaknesses? She becomes the what? You bet. There you go. Now who's leading who? She's not going away from my past. She's not trying to hide my past. She is confronting my past with the power of God. Come on, somebody. Now, vice versa. I know your weakness, and I know your weaknesses. Yo soy el hombre aquí, yo mando. Watch it, woman. Cuidado. Submit. Submit. And I see a weakness in my wife or an area that needs help. I become the leader. I walk slow because you have high heels. I become the leader. And I lead. Come on, somebody. So that doesn't mean, well, just the man has the position. El hombre es el mero mero. It means that when you are one, you are one. Come on. So let's get off our high horses, man. Because God will remind you where you came from. A bunch of dirt. And he'll remind you that he put you to sleep so he can create someone to help you. So don't deal treacherously. Thank you, baby. Don't deal treacherously with the wife of your youth now more to come on Wednesday because I have to go deeper with that but uh, did you see that Amen. wives submit so submission is in a bowing submission is in an order submission is a strength Amen. did you get it Amen. it's a strength when I submit, what am I doing? I am providing strength for my family. But, but, but what do you mean submit? Well, number one, before you come to number 22, we got to get number 21 right. Verse number 21. Right? 21 says, verse 21 says in Ephesians 5, submitting to each other in... Okay, not on, not around, not on top, but what? So, my wife, come please again. Submit. <coughs> I will submit after church wherever you want to go eat. <coughs> Submitting to each other, showing strength to each other. In. So, who's in? Well, that's between us. Who's in us? In the fear of the Lord. Come on. In the fear of the Lord. Thank you, baby. So wherever we are, we are to submit to each other. But we are to do it not just by our own strength, by our own resources, by our own not. Because really, one plus one is two. That's what we thought. Come on. Now God messed me all up. One plus one is no longer two. Even though he has his own set of rules, his own set of ways. No me, no va a cambiar este nombre. Nunca va a cambiar esto. Trae un cabeza de... Hallelujah. Nunca cambia. Or vice versa. Vice versa. But when we submit to each other in the fear of the Lord, one plus one equals one strength. Amen. Give the Lord a great hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hermana Oralia, please come forward because you're going to be the grand finale. Hallelujah. We're going to have some fireworks right now. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to do two things at twice. Amen. Or at the same time. We're going to pick up an offering. 
We're going to continue to, to love on the Lord and to give to the Lord. So ushers, please come and bring our offering containers here so we can honor. La hermana Oralia is going to be coming to sing a special song. Number eight. Hallelujah. Number eight on that CD. We're going to get the mic ready for us. We're already ready. Praise the Lord for her. And uh, 52 years, hermana. Praise the Lord. 52 años. <laughs> <laughs> amen. And amen. We're going to pray over the offering, and we're going we're gonna to deliver the offering to the work of the Lord. Sow your best seed. And in the midst of our offering, Hermana Oral is going to sing a special song to just get us going and get us moving. Amen. Amen. Happy Fourth of July. So God bless you.
de echar tortillas. <risa> de comprar el costal de 25 libras. Aleluya. Y le dije a mi esposo, ahora sí, no va a haber tortillas. No more. No more. <risa> no more tortillas. Ahora hay restaurantes. Eso. El taquito. <risa> Amen. God bless you, hermana. Give them a great hand clap, please. Hallelujah. Thank you, hermana. I, I wanted to, to bless Fernando and uh, Criselda. I know we're we're busy doing our things right now. We're going to go have lunch or barbecue. But I wanted to, what, what greater way than to celebrate and to honor them. Y'all please come forward at this time. And I wanted to pray over them just right here in the front. But I want everyone to see this as they're coming forward. See, all of us saw one person, like we saw Secret Zelda, plus one man, Fernando, equals one couple, right? They're one, they're one, they're one. Now, I'm not going to ask you to stand the way we stood, you know, but uh, they are one couple, 22 years of matrimony, amen, and to give God all the praise and all the glory. But see, they, they, they... They found out a secret. They found out a secret that we are to show and to continue to show our children. That it's not just one man plus one woman equals one relationship. It is actually turned around where it is one God equals one savior you see a plus sign I see a cross who died for our sins for one church Amen. one God the overall plan of God's marriage is one God equals one son who is Jesus Christ the bridegroom who died for his bride so that he could save his bride from eternal damnation to come pick up his bride on his wedding day. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So we need to go back to school and learn our, our pluses. But I just wanted to bless this couple. I wanted to anoint them because by faith they have started a journey of faith with us. Starting January, they started uh, with living faith. Uh, three years ago in their heart, their spirit was hooked up. Is that right, Criselda? Once we met each other and the Holy Spirit hooked us up spiritually. Sometimes God takes time to, to work. And uh, it's not about stepping out, stepping in or whatever it's about just letting God be God and letting God's timing fulfill itself and so they're in the perfect place with the perfect family right now and uh, giving God the perfect praise amen so let's stretch our hands to this this family y'all y'all hold hands yeah watch out y'all holding okay good 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 I encourage couples hold hands when you come to church amen Father, we thank you. Lord, first and foremost, for the life you so give us. And Lord, because you gave us your son to be the bridegroom, the greatest example of marriage, Lord, we look to you. And Lord, here for Fernando and Griselda, Lord, 22 years later, their loving children and, and, and families, their testimonies and their gifts and their talents. Lord, I just know that their greatest days are now and just ahead. So Lord, I bless them and declare their marriage blessed in the name of the Lord and Jesus to be glorified forever. Amen. Wives, submit to <laughs> oh, We got to have some fun, right? Amen. Well, we love them. Y'all stay right there.
Our church is going to love on them. Amen. And so, uh, Louis, just play some music if you can. Whatever you'd like to say. Sister Elia, you stand right here by Fernando because you turned uh, 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 29 yesterday. And uh, we want to bless her. Amen. And we want to say we love her too. Hey, we'll see you Wednesday, a continuation of this teaching on God's plan for marriage because marriage matters. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. Happy Fourth of July. God bless everybody. He knows my name. Every step that I take.